Okay. So now for the second part, we'll have a look at the role-based delegation. Now the role-based delegation allows us to define very specific roles within AGMP that allows the that allows those people that have been assigned those roles to do very specific operations on these group policies. Now as you can see in general there are four roles been defined from a editor through reviewer approval and through the full control or the AGPM admin. So the AGPM admin has full control, he's capable of doing whatever operation he, you like even delegating other roles to other people. Now, on the other hand, you have the editor. The editor is the person that is capable of editing a group policy offline, making changes in it, and then checking it back in. Now, on the other hand, he's not capable of deploying such a group policy uh, because such a policy would first need to be reviewed by a very specific person that person could then decide uh, if it's okay and go uh, to the approving uh, of the group policy and then deploy that into production. Now, what you will find out is that by default when you possibly connect to AGPM, you will have no permissions whatsoever. And let's have a quick look uh, at that. So when I'm actually um, working here as the administrator, do you remember a minute ago when we went through the installation, we had to identify the archive owner. In our situation, we've decided to uh, create some groups in the Active Directory with the purpose of managing AGPM. And so now I had created the AGPM admins. The AGPM admins, I have dedicated them as the owner of the archive. So that means that they are managing that complete infrastructure. And so if I now start up the GPMC, which is also my client interface for the group, uh, for the advanced group policy management console, you will notice that I don't have any permissions. Now, why is that? Not sufficient permissions. I'm currently logged on as the administrator. The administrator, even though he's a domain admin, is not a member of the AGPN admins. And so, even though you're a domain admin, that is now completely moved away from the all or nothing. You're now in AGPM. In there, it's the AGPM admins that decide what you can do. And so, if I actually do want to be capable of connecting, I will actually have to run the Group Policy Management Console in another security context. And that being in the security context of CURT, which is considered to be the GPO admin. So, consent, and here we go. And now when we actually would connect through the change control, you will notice that we will be capable of connecting uh, through the infrastructure. Why? Because we're actually an AGPM admin. So now once that Kurt has connected to the AGPM server, which we've de defined before, you now notice that he is indeed capable of looking at the archive. Now, so far it's empty. And the reason actually uh, why well, somebody will cover that later, but the reason why uh, Kurt is capable of looking at the archive is because he's a, a member of the um, AGPM admins. Now, notice that we're going to take it then to the next step, and we're going to assign all those very specific roles which we've talked about, our uh, approver, our re uh, reviewer, and editor. We're going to link those roles to security groups that we have in our organization. Now, for that reason, I've actually built those groups. Um, let's say we're going to, uh, so they're all empty. The approvers, you have the editors, and let's add some uh, junior admin. Let's add Rudy to this group. Then we have our reviewers group, which is also empty. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to map the roles defined in AGPM with the security groups that live here in Active Directory. Where do we do that? We do that on the Domain Delegation tab. On the Domain Delegation tab, I can see actually the roles uh, assigned to specific groups and by default because AGPM admins are the archive owners they have become the uh, full control role owner. So we're going to add the other ones and that is AGPM editors the editor will be an editor of course and we're going to add the AGPM approver, which will be an approver. And then we still have the AGPM reviewer. We'll make them a reviewer. So as you can see, it's the linking of a specific security group to a role. Now, the best practice, of course, is to do this through um, groups. However, it's perfectly possible to do that through users. Now, if you think I need a little bit of this role plus a little bit of that role, that's perfectly possible. When you look at the advanced um, options, you can actually see for any of those security groups which of the roles they have been assigned, but it is perfectly capable to decide that an editor, which is a reviewer at the same time as well, when I go into the advanced for the editor and look at the exact uh, very specific permissions he has re received, I could decide that uh, since he's not capable of deploying the GPO, I could allow him to deploy the GPO and then make this appear as being a custom uh, permission. So this is perfectly possible, it's very customizable and that's actually uh, what I was referring to in the slide deck as well that you can actually assign very special permissions. Okay. So, that being said, that's okay. What else do we see here? Well, once we go into the workflow, you'll notice that we can get approved, we can get notified through email that someone has requested uh, for the creation or the deployment of a policy. And we'll go back, we'll come back to this tab at a later time. Okay.